We want to take a moment and give a huge welcome to all the virtual members of Columbine United Church. Uh, some of you join us right here in the metropolitan Denver area. Some of you are on the other side of the big pond over in Europe. And some of you are, are all around the United States. Wherever you are, we want you to know that you are with us right now. And we consider you a part of this big family. And we want to say good morning and welcome to you. But as always, the same message I give to you is the message I give to all of you. Don't keep the good news of Columbine United Church to yourself. You always tell people about the new books you're reading, about the new movies that you've gone see. Tell people about the church that you attend. So you, virtually, take the uh, URL of this YouTube, put it on your Facebook page, Twitter it out, uh, send it to someone who you know needs to hear this message. But it is great to have you here. Let's give them a warm Columbine welcome. The scripture reading this morning comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, the 26th chapter, verses 28. Listen for God's word as it comes to us today. During the meal, Jesus took and blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat. This is my body. Take ye the cup and thanking God, he gave it to them. Drink this. All of you, this is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I'll not be drinking wine from this cup again until that new day when I'll drink with you in the kingdom of my Father. And here the, the passage ends. May God bless these words as we seek to apply them to our lives. My next 30 years. You know, it's really fun. We are, this Sunday begins the first Sunday of our generosity campaign. For the next three Sundays, we're going to be talking about generosity, entering ending up uh, in three Sundays on the Generosity Sunday. And Justin and I were talking about what kind of a theme song we should have for this uh, generosity campaign, because we're calling it the next 45 years. That's the theme for this uh, generosity campaign, the next 45 years. And because uh, we just finished the 45-year celebration of our first 45, so now we're thinking about the next 45. And, and all of a sudden, when I was driving to work, and I said, man, I know the perfect song for this. And, and many of you know this song, the Tim McGraw, right? Tim McGraw. So sit back and listen to this great song. Hey, who's singing it? Barry is going to sing it. Barry, it is great to have you with us now for the next several months going forward. Barry, come on up. So just don't sit there like, you know, you're watching. I mean, you know this song, so you can kind of get along and sing with Barry. You can kind of get along like... Yeah. That's white, you know, me. That's good stuff I'll right get there. Off the stage. Are you feeling it out there? Let it in just a little bit. I think I'll take a moment to celebrate my age. The ending of an era, the turning of a page. Now it's time to focus in on where I go from here. Lord, have mercy on my next 30 years. Hey, my next 30 years, I'm going to have some fun. Try to forget about all the crazy things I've done. Maybe now I've conquered all my adolescent fears And I'll do it better in my next 30 years My next 30 years I'm gonna settle all the scores Cry a little less and laugh a little more Find a world of happiness without the hate and fear Figure out just what I'm doing here in my next 30 years. Oh, my next 30 years. I'm gonna watch my weight Eat a few more salads and not stay up so late Drink some lemonade and not so many beers 
Maybe I'll remember my next 30 years Well, my next 30 years will be the best years of my life Raise a little family and hang out with my wife Spend precious moments with the ones that I hold dear Make up for lost time here in my next 30 years So what about your next 30 years? Got that idea? Great. Love it, love it, love it. So next 45 years, where are you going to be in 45 years? Where are you going to be in 45 years? Some of you are going, oh. I don't want to think about that, you know, I might be flying with the angels, that's a good place, that's good, you know, we got to think about the next 45 years, because as I said, you know, on Rally Day, we celebrated, you know, the next, the, the past 45 years, and so now, the next 45 years, so today I'm going to be talking about what's new, kind of that whole sense, because we can only really discover what's the next 45 years when we celebrate what's new. That's today. Next Sunday, I'm going to be preaching on, uh, I'm calling it the Bridges of Jefferson County. The Bridges of Jefferson County. <laughs> going to be looking about, the, you know, the, the past 45 years, because in the past 45 years, this whole church has been about discovering what's ahead. And then the third Sunday, Justin and I are going to be talking, we're going to be kind of dreaming about what, what will it look like in 45 years? What will this church look like in 45 years? Will we even be here in 45 years? Because, you know, there's a lot of people who say, you know what, I'm tired of thinking about the future. I don't want to think about the future. Can't we just be okay the way we are right now? I mean, just not, let's just not change things. You know, churches, churches don't like change. Just not change things. Well, I can tell you something. I've been all through Europe. Not all through Europe, but a lot of Europe. And I've seen a lot of churches over there who stopped thinking about the future, who stopped thinking about, well, how do we need to change to be relevant in the next 45 years? Do you know what they call those churches that have stopped thinking over there? Museums. <laughs> they call them museums. And I tell you, I do not want to be a curator of a museum. Because, you know, if I'm a curator, do you know what that makes you? An artifact. It makes you an antiquity. And for some of you, that might work. But you don't want to be that. You want to be vibrant. You want to be alive. You want to be a part of a vibrant congregation. That's why I got you to think about what's new. What's new? What's new with you? What's new? You know, I want to talk about what's new, but you know, in many ways it's kind of funny because well, I'm excited about the new. I don't do a whole lot of new stuff. I mean, think about it. I've had the same job for 30, 31 years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've lived in the same house for 30 years. I've had the same wife for 33 years. I've even had the same kids for 25 years. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know I, I buy the same cars. I keep the same cars. You know, I just bought a new, uh, new truck, just bought a new, new car, a uh, new truck and a, and a Subaru, sold all the other cars. But, you know, I bought my truck in 1997. I thought I was going to have it until I died, you know. And, and when I started looking at a, at a new, new car, I felt like I was, you know, committing adultery or something. And, and, <laughs> and, and then, I, you know, I sold the car. And then, and then I began to realize, why have I been hanging on to this old thing? Hey, you, the new cars, the technology in the new cars, isn't it amazing? Holy cow, they got that Bluetooth thing where it hooks up to your phone. And, you, you know, before you even get near the car, it, you know, it starts talking to you and picks up your music. You, you can talk while you're driving into space. You know, and that, that new car smell. Man, they ought to turn that into a perfume. Gals, I'm talking to you, baby. You want your husbands to pay attention to you. That new car smell. You know, you get a new car, you get a new car, and the windshield 
a brand new windshield. You're not like doing this around the cracks. You know, it's not all the pits. You know, I get into, like, get into the car and I go, I sing, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all the obstacles in my way unless I'm texting. <laughs> no texting. This has nothing to do with the sermon, but it's funny. I pulled up a stop sign uh, about a week or so ago, pulled up beside a cop who was texting. <laughs> I looked over at him and I went, he said, I thought that was so funny. You know, in, in, in my, I have this new Subaru Forester. It's got all this, you know, it's got this, uh, all these airbags and stuff. You know, that if it, get, it makes me almost want to get in a crash to see exactly what what will happen. And it's got this eyesight thing. It's got this eyesight thing that you know that uh, that supposedly if you are texting or whatever, and, and you're gonna rear end, you're gonna rear end somebody, it breaks itself. Now, how do you test that? I, you know, I've, I've been tempted to test it, but I, I chicken out at the last and, and hit the brake. But new stuff. You, there's all kinds of new stuff that you'll never, never discover unless you try to do the new. What's new? What's new with you? I love new things. New movies. There's so many great new movies that are out there. I just saw St. Vincent, you know, over the weekend. The Judge is next. People were telling me, oh, you've got to see The Judge. Great movies. New books. I love new books. Uh, John Rankin told me, Steve, you really got to read A Fault in Our Stars. It's a great book. How many of you have read or seen the movie A Fault in Our Stars? A lot of our young people back there. It's a powerful, it's a powerful book, a powerful movie about, about two teenagers who have uh, cancer, really profound cancer, and how in the midst of their illness, they discover the newness of love. And it's a very touching, a very profound book. And what I love about books is I get new ideas. And, you know, and I'm reading this, and it's a fast little read. Zooming through it. And all of a sudden, there's a line that stopped me dead in my tracks. These kids are talking, and they say, you know, they said, infinity is not a universal concept. Infinity is not a universal con concept. And I started thinking about that. Well, that's right, based upon your moral and faith development, your spiritual development, your intellectual capacity, your amount of education and experience, that your concept of infinity is going to be very different than my concept of infinity. And then I was off to the races. And I started thinking about new ideas. And that's what I love about new ideas. It, it takes you into, into new, new places, new categories, new ways of being. You know, sometimes this church is like, no, we don't like new thoughts. We don't like new thinking. That's, you know, heresy. May we all be heretics. I think that's how the kingdom of God is built. What's new with you? Now, you know, I really believe that where we need to start, if you can start with the new, is you've, you've got to take where you are right now and say that where you are right now is very, very good. You right, I don't think we say this enough. You are very, very good. You are beautiful. You are good. You are loved. You are accepted. You know, you are perfect right now. If you can't accept that, here's the problem. If you can't say, I'm good, I'm beautiful, I'm perfect right now, then you'll never discover the new. Pay attention to this move. You'll never discover the new because the new for you will be trying to break, trying to fix what is broken. Because if you're not good with where you are, then you're going to have to say, well, I've got to fix this. I've got to fix this. And so everything new for you will be about trying to fix something, and that's not new. That's like for you if, if life is like digging a hole. See, anytime the head is below a rear end, it never works out right. <laughs> it's one of Pooh's Benson's major laws in life. God designed your head to stay above your rear end. Every bad thing that's ever happened to me, falling off bicycles, being bucked from a horse, it always got inverted and it never ended right. If you live your life this way, it's not going to end. Because you know what this says? You know, you're going to go, well, meaning is i got to go deeper. And so you get, you're in one place, and you decide, I'm going to go deeper. And I've, I've even said that we got to go deeper. But you know what? If you're going deeper, and if things are not working out for you, you know what? Then you say, well, i got to dig faster. So you start digging faster. 
You know, and then if that's not working out for you, you can say, well, we need to find an expert. Well, you know what an expert is? An expert is someone who sits on the bottom of a hole and knows how to dig deep in one hole. You know, if your life is broken and I tell you change, you know what you're going to think? You're going to think, oh, I've got to widen my hole. (laughs) Widening your hole is not new. It's not change. Everybody, anybody who's fundamentally changed humanity, from Einstein to Steve Jobs, from Jesus to Buddha, they were able to get up out of their hole and they did something completely different. They did something wild. They saw the world differently than any one of us could see. And because they saw it, they were able to say to us, Hey, you in the hole, come out. And he said, No, I like my my PC. And Jobs, you know, this really funny story is, I know that some of you love PCs. Bless your heart. (laughs) PCs never worked for me. But I thought this was computer. This was a computer. Until somebody said, until Steve Jobs, I heard Steve Jobs saying, try a Macintosh. You know, it's like, and for me, you know, when I got a Macintosh, it's like, I can be computer literate. I thought I was a Luddite. And suddenly, because, you know, Macintoshes are designed for us, they were a little more on the fluffy side. And, you know, it's like artistic. Because it was new. What do you need to do to get up out of your hole? Now keep on digging. Not expand. To get up and do the new. Do the new. You know, that, this is what is so profound about the faith of Jesus. The presence of God in the midst of our life. Think about this. It starts with a new testament that tells about Jesus who makes all things new. Who gave us a new commandment. You shall love the Lord. You shall uh, love one another. He gave us a new teaching. Love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He gave us a new covenant. He gave us a new name. We, Paul says we are new creations. We sing a new song in a new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. There it's in there somewhere. New. Everything is... Not once did Jesus say, You, you're right what you find, right where you are. Stop. He didn't say, I have come to keep things the way they are. No, I have come to build the kingdom of God. You get up, move. Because of your faith, you go. I send you out two by two. I send, move, change, do something new. Do something new. Get up out of your You just think about this. You know, for 2,000 years, people have been coming to this table. And and talk about an old celebration. Uh, The Passover meal had been going on for several hundred years. And they had developed a liturgy that they said over and over and over again. A liturgy, when they picked up the matzah, they said words. When they picked up the cup of Elijah, they said words. Except for when Jesus did it. And suddenly, it was brand new. When it was the matzah, he said new words. My body broken for you. And they went, whoa, can you do that? I mean, can you really say that? I mean, isn't that like breaking some kind of synagogue rules? And, and then he picked up the cup and he said, saying the same words for the cup of Elijah, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. New. You know, I think it's an amazing thing is that, do you know, even though Jesus said everything new, 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 do you know that as soon as he, you know, left, we didn't do anything new. Do you know what we do here on Sunday morning is basically the same thing that they did in the synagogue when Jesus went to synagogue when he was a boy. Well, right now, we're on the cusp of changing that. I guarantee you, when Jesus was around, they didn't go to church on YouTube. We are expanding the notion and the concept 
about what it means to go to church. But that's in two Sundays. It's not an old covenant. It's not the same covenant. It's a new covenant. It's a new covenant for the forgiveness of your sins. That means you are forgiven. It means it's in the past. It means it's done. So, so God is constantly saying to you, why do you keep on going back there? I've said it's done. It's forgiven. Let it alone. You have a future. That's what I'm concerned about, says God. Your future. You discovering what is new. So let's talk about the new you. The new you. If you had to wave a magic wand, sprinkle some fairy dust, divine fairy dust on you, where would you ask God to do something new with you? New relationship? New job? New house? New lover? New friend? A new way of being, new ideas. Where are you stuck? Where's where's your hole? Well, you know, you, one of the things I found is you you we got to get you thinking in new ways. We have to prime your pump. And so what I've decided is that um, watch me, camera. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. So follow me. So for the next seven days, my challenge to you is every single day. I want you to do something new. Now think with me. I want you to do something new. I'm going to prime your pump. I'm going to give you two ideas for seven days. And then you are going to fill in the gaps. And we're going to see if we can come up with at least seven things that you can do new. Monday. This is an easy one. A new food. A new food. Tuesday. Go with me. Tuesday, you're going to drive to work in a new way. I've primed your pump. What's new on Wednesday? See? Right there. Boom. <laughs> you're choking on the bat. You knew. I was a boy. Wednesday, what are you going to do new? What, what, what? What? Talk to somebody new. It's Wednesday. Thursday. New ice cream flavor. New ice cream flavor. <laughs> yeah, baby. Talk about getting stuck in a rut. We like, you know, Neapolitan, which is one of the ugliest ice creams in the world. Why you get stuck on Neapolitan? So a new ice cream. Friday. Oh, a new kind of music. A new kind of music. Friday. Saturday. Huh? Play with new friends. That one gets an applause, baby. Good for you, baby. You're listening. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what you can't say at the, at the 8 o'clock service when I said Sunday. And Nicholas said, go to a new church. <laughs> Yeah, why do I even do this? What a risk. <laughs> Sunday, what are you going to do? No, no new ministers. <laughs> you know, someone said a new seat. Do you know what? You have assigned seats. Do you know that Justin and I, Justin, Joe, and I, when we are sitting there, we kind of go, did you see so-and-so? Well, let's see. I haven't seen them. Well, okay, they're on the right-hand side. <laughs> Three rows in, about the middle. Yeah, they were there at the 930 service. You are such creatures of habit. Chris Emus, you always sit right there, baby. No. No. You know, when we give you the, the bread and the cup, we say, oftentimes we say, this is a new covenant. I'm changing that. Because it's really what God is saying. Hey, I want to know what's new with you.
Let's pray. God, you come to us this morning, and you are looking at us, and you are asking that question, what is new with you? This morning, we woke up, and some of us gave an answer to that, and some of us didn't. But tomorrow morning, God, we are pledging to you that we will answer that question for you, that we will have something new to tell you about, to do with our day, to do in the world with others. May we be the kind of people this week who go out into the world and we play with someone new. Because we know that not only will we be there, but you will be there. And you'll be doing something new in that person's life, not only in ours. God, give us the courage. Give us the grace. Give us the strength to say, I'm going to do something new today. And all along, you've been teaching us this prayer. And it tells us all things become new. That heaven comes to earth. That sins are forgiven. The things that we did not think possible can actually happen. And we lift up that prayer now saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.